question three, pause and have a read. And now on part one, we want to do the normal distribution for company B on the same graph that A was on. So let's have a look at a comparison of those two distributions. So A had a mean at 220, where B's got a mean at 200. So B is going to have its peak at 200, a little further down the scale. Um, a had a standard deviation of 90, whereas B's got a standard deviation of 50. Uh, so it's going to be narrower. The width of our um, normal distributions are always approximately six times the standard deviation. So if we do um, 50 times 3, that's 150. And then we go 150 above 200. So we're going to go up to about 350 and then 150 below 200. So we'll go down to um, 150 there. So our width there is six times the standard deviation centered around 200. So it's going to be taller and narrower than A, something like this. Tiniest bit of the tail going beyond that 50 and 350 because um, our six standard deviations contain approximately 99% of the data. Flick over to the mark schedule shows us that. So then back to part two, from past data, 10% of online videos were longer than 330. Would A or B be a better model? So work out the um, probability of X being greater than um, 330 on A. So we go to our stats menu. We're going to go distributions, normal, cumulative, we are going for a lower limit of 330 um, on A oh, and an upper limit of just something very big. On A, our standard deviation is 90. Oops, let's go at 90 in there properly. And the mean was 220. So we get a probability of 0 0.1108. And on B, we go back and do that again, but we change our standard deviation is 50. And the mean was 200. 0 0.0046612. So A is better than um, B because it's closer to the 10%. And you can see that comparison um, here on our mark scheme. So calculating one of those probabilities correctly gets you the achieved point. Uh, and then both of them correctly calculated with a correct conclusion gives you the merit point. Okay, using companies A, company A's model, calculate an estimate for the probability that a randomly selected online video is shorter than 150 seconds, given that its length is between 100 and 300. Right, this given that means that we are doing a conditional probability. Summarize it like this, the probability that x is less than 150, given that we know it's between 100 and 300. Now remember your conditional probability formula, I'm pretty sure it's on the formula sheet here. So that's equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So first off, the probability of A and B. So this thing and this thing. So for it to be less than 150 and between 100 and 300, then that's going to be the probability that X is between 100 and 150. So it satisfies both of those conditions. And then we're going to divide that through by the probability of our condition. So the second part, the probability of x being between 100 and 300. So that's our probability of A over the probability of B. From 100 and up to 150. And that's 0.1271 divided by we're going to go from 100 up to 300. 0 0.7218. 0 0.1761. And here's our answer there.
So one of those probabilities worked out correctly gives you U, two of them, and then attempting conditional probability gives you a merit, and correctly calculating the whole lot gives you an excellence point, which I think is actually a pretty easy excellence. Um, got some information about a online video model by a random variable. It goes between 3, 43, and with the mode of 18. So having only got those three values, then um, all we can do really with it really is a triangular distribution, which is a little bit unusual because we've already had a triangular distribution question, but that's what it's going to be. Like So first off, we need the probability of a single advert being um, longer than 30 seconds. So here, whoops, we've got 30 somewhere here. This height here is 0 0.05. We need to work out this height. The angle we know is 0 0.05. This distance on the bottom, first of all, starts off as being 25, and we want to shrink that down to 13. So h will be 13 out of 25 times by 0 0.05. 0 to 6. We want the area of that triangle, so the probability of uh, one of them being greater than 30 will be half times the base times the height, 1, 6, 9. So two randomly selected adverts, both of them being longer than 30 seconds. Think of it like a tree diagram, so like the first one was more than 30 and the second one was also more than 30, then the probability on each of those branches would be 0 0.169. So the probability of both being greater than 30 is equal to 0 0.169 times 0 0.169. 0 0.0225. So And here we have that all worked out there. That was worth up to a merit. The, um, someone has come across this problem whilst looking for practice problems to do. So it's a completely made up problem. And the question asks you to think about two reasons why the model suggested for the number of re raisins in a box is not realistic. So this is the thing. Some teacher at some point has come up with this problem. Why was this not a good problem? That's what it's asking. So um, I would, first of all, have a look at this not being a real way that raisins get measured. They don't get measured by how many are in a pack. If you look at packs of raisins, they're measured by weight, which would be a better thing to, to model your distribution on. I suggested reason number one. Look at the numbers and see if they are reasonable. So if we've got 200 as a mean and a standard deviation of 30, then we could say that um, most of the data is covered by um, six standard deviations or three standard deviations away from the mean. So if we did that, uh, this model would take us to 290 and down to um, 110. And even if we go two standard deviations away, then we would also cover most of the data. We cover about 95% of it. So 95% would be two standard deviations away, which is 260, down to um, 140. That's a lot of variation for something that is um, maintained by a machine. We wouldn't expect it to vary as much. My written up explanation. Um, here's what's written up in the mark scheme, so you can have a read through of that. To the end of this video, going through those worked solutions, Thank you for watching Mr. Graham's Maths and hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there for me. Maybe have a look at the suggested videos that are coming up at the side. You might find them useful as well or hit up my channel and see what's um, listed there under Level 3 Maths.